An open letter to Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Ed Markey, the co-leaders of the Green New Deal, and Dr. Jill Stein, the candidate for president for the Green Party. There is much to celebrate in 2024. I personally celebrate the fact that I can send an open letter to three environmental statesmen. Please join with me. Let's celebrate the strong trend toward clean hydrogen as a replacement for filthy fossil fuels. Rejoice with me. Elon Musk has announced that in addition to his electric cars, he will be producing two different types of hydrogen-powered cars in 2024. Toyota's chairman, Akio Toyoda, has announced that in addition to his currently produced hydrogen fuel cell cars, his company will develop a V8 internal combustion engine that is fueled by hydrogen. Wow! Cheer with me for this one. A clean energy breakthrough. Hyperion Motors of Orange, California has offered a limited run of 300 Hyperion XP1 prototype supercars. The XP-1 is a fuel cell sports car powered by hydrogen. It can be refueled in three to five minutes at one of California's 65 hydrogen filling stations. And it emits pure, non-polluting water vapor. Refueling stops are few. Very rare, because the XP-1 has a range of over 1,000 miles. It also has 2,038 horsepower. It can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.25 seconds, and it has a top speed of over 220 miles per hour. Check all of this out. There are many exciting pictures online. But this new Hyperion is not an altogether exclusive item. California has already placed about 12,000 hydrogen-powered vehicles on the highway. Like the Hyperion, the Toyota Mirai and the Hyundai Nexo are each fuel cell vehicles. They each emit pure water vapor. They each have refuel times and ranges that are equal to gasoline engines. But the acceleration rates of the Mirai and the Nexo are 0 to 60 in nine seconds. After a successful road test from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, about 300 XP1s are now on the road. While California already has 12,000 hydrogen-powered vehicles on the road, industry groups in Japan, South Korea, and China are planning to increase hydrogen-powered cars to the hundreds of thousands in the next decade. All right, and here is more good news. Zero Avia and Universal Hydrogen have successfully tested hydrogen-powered light aircraft, and they expect to announce a form of commercial air travel soon. Multiple power companies are exploring the development of hydrogen for heating of homes 
and hydrogen is also being considered as a replacement for diesel in the powering of heavy transport. But why use hydrogen as a fuel? Because when it is manufactured using electrolysis, it is non-polluting green hydrogen and will not contribute to the climate crisis. Electrolysis is a method which uses electricity to separate hydrogen from oxygen in water. This manufacturing technique is 100% pollution free. The beauty of green hydrogen is that it is endless. When hydrogen gas is used in automobiles, it recombines with oxygen, ignites, and goes out of the exhaust pipe as pure water vapor. When hydrogen is used to boost missiles into space, it leaves a pure water vapor trail. And when hydrogen is used to power heavy transport, it replaces jet black diesel smoke with harmless water vapor. Hydrogen can never be depleted because it is extracted from water and when it delivers energy, it just returns to water from whence it came. Hydrogen, therefore, has been dubbed the forever fuel. Let's visit the smoky horrors of our present day. Electrolysis is expensive and inefficient. The ratio of electricity used to the amount of hydrogen produced destroys the profit margin. Private industry, therefore, opts for the cheapest manufacturing procedures to produce hydrogen. 95% of the hydrogen manufactured in the United States is gray, blue, or turquoise hydrogen. Gray hydrogen is manufactured from natural gas. This process not only hurls carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide skyward, but it also promotes dangerous fracking to release the natural gas. Blue hydrogen is also manufactured from natural gas, but the pollutants are captured and used in private industry or buried about a thousand feet deep. Turquoise hydrogen is manufactured from methane. All of these techniques cause pollution. Meanwhile, the climate crisis is widening and deepening. Warmer oceans are progressively creating stronger, more numerous hurricanes and typhoons. Melting ice caps are submerging small islands and altering our coastlines. New severe weather patterns are causing drought and wildfires in some areas and floods and destruction in others. As the planet gets warmer, research scientists throughout the world are telling us that greenhouse gases are at an all-time high and are trending upward and that we are descending into environmental hell. We are descending into irrevocable environmental hell. Leading like FDR, in the crisis of the Great Depression, the private sector collapsed and was unable 
to create jobs for 25% of our basic workforce. In this crisis of mass poverty, FDR created four major work relief agencies that gave the unemployed work built a huge part of America's basic infrastructure and literally saved American capitalism. Roosevelt called his magnificent program the New Deal. The private sector has failed again. In the Great Depression, the private sector was incapable of creating jobs. And in our climate crisis, it has failed to provide a pollution-free alternative to filthy fossil fuels. It took four major work relief programs to end the depression in American homes it will take only one major government agency to create a swift pathway to a new clean hydrogen economy. Let's call our new agency the United States Green Hydrogen Agency, USGH for short. The USGH mission should be to manufacture pollution-free green hydrogen in mega amounts at a fraction of the cost of the gray hydrogen private industry is providing. Please accompany me as we briefly seek insights for the development of a United States Green Hydrogen Agency. Let's quickly explore the New Deal example and the climate crisis parallel. Civilian Conservation Corps was a New Deal agency that demonstrates how quickly a government agency can get things done. It therefore serves as a model of swift efficiency for our proposed U.S. Green Hydrogen Agency. Here is a quick peek at the CCC. This agency lasted from 1933 to 1942. Its major accomplishments were over three million men were hired. They built 125,000 miles of road and 46,854 bridges and 3,000 lookout fire towers. They contributed 8 million hours to fighting fires. They planted 3.5 billion trees. They strung 89,000 miles of telephone wire. They built 18,000 check dams for erosion control. They contributed extensive work in state and national parks. And now let's take a quick look at TVA, a New Deal agency that serves as our model for service before profit. The Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA. This agency lasted from 1933 to the present day, 2024. TVA built 29 high dams on the tributaries to the 652-mile Tennessee River. The turbines in these 29 hydroelectric dams still churn out cheap electricity for parts of a seven-state region. Here are a few of those dams. First, the Norris Dam. Then, the Wilson Dam. 
and a peek at the inner workings of the Mount Raccoon Pump and Storage Station. In addition to the 29 hydroelectric dams of the TVA, FDR finished and dedicated the Hoover Dam and built the Grand Coulee Dam in Washington State, as well as scores of others. The Hoover Dam sells affordable electricity to Nevada and parts of two other states. The Grand Coulee Dam sells cheap power to Washington and parts of 10 western states and parts of Canada. Service over profits. All of Roosevelt's New Deal dams were gifted to the people of the United States of America, and all are federally owned. None of the New Deal dams were ever intended for private gain. When TVA began, it sold electricity to a seven-state region for half the cost of the surrounding private power companies. And for the first time in history, the TVA strung wire to the most remote areas to make certain that every farmer had electricity regardless of cost. In spite of this, after the initial outlay, which provided wages for the unemployed in the Great Depression, TVA never required taxpayer support. It is financially self-sustaining to this day. TVA also rapidly turned a poor backward region into a thriving industrial hub, a hub that contributed mightily to the winning of World War II and the prosperity that followed. The New Deal Example Here are the details of the Depression Crisis. When FDR took office on March 1, 1933, the stock market had lost 90% of its value. Over 9,000 banks had failed. 50% of the mortgages in the United States were in default. Farmers had lost more than 400,000 farms. The unemployment rate was 25%, and 30% of our families had no income at all. In addition to the CCC and the TVA, two work relief agencies of the New Deal, which have already been mentioned, Roosevelt created the Emergency Banking Act, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the Public Works Administration, the Works Progress Administration, the Social Security Act, and the Fair Labor Standards Act. These New Deal programs saved millions of homes and farms, added billions to our infrastructure and our permanent wealth, held the line against complete economic collapse, and saved American capitalism. The colossal volume and depth of the New Deal is staggering, yet the entire program was enacted in five years. Roosevelt was intensely occupied with the crisis of the Depression from 1933 to 1938. After that, he was forced to deal exclusively with foreign affairs and World War II. The Climate Crisis Parallel IPCC told us in 2018, 
We must eliminate fossil fuels in 12 years. 2030 is our 12th year. The Climate Crisis Parallel. 2030 is also five years away. And that is the point of heavily diminishing returns. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. In an August 9, 2021 report of the IPCC, we are told that we are currently releasing billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as a result of gas, oil, and coal production. And our production of greenhouse gases is at an all-time high and trending higher. The dimensions of the crisis. IPCC specifies that the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is the highest it has been in two million years. Sea level rise is at its fastest in 3,000 years. Antarctic sea ice is at its lowest levels in at least 1,000 years. We must make massive cuts in greenhouse gases now. IPCC has also reaffirmed that we must make immediate and massive cuts in greenhouse gas emissions now to avert swift environmental ruin. Is this data stark realism or hysterical panic? Let's consider the source. IPCC is a panel of 234 scientists from 66 countries. They reached their conclusions after examining 14,000 scientific papers. They described their findings in a 3,949-page report, and their report, in turn, has been endorsed by 195 governments. Join me in honoring their scholarship and their truth claims. We must replace fossil fuels in five years. The manufacture of electrical vehicles must be expanded enormously now. A hydrogen economy must be achieved now. If the entire New Deal was achieved in five years, we can produce clean air in five years. Voters must help. In the election of 2024, let's remove the negative dead weight of the climate deniers and those who are busy building American fascism and aren't aware of a climate crisis. Leaders of the environmental movement, President Biden and Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm. Thank you, all of you, for obtaining monumental funding for the fight against the climate crisis. Thank you also for releasing the first few billions for environmental projects in seven regions of the United States. Thank you also to Representative Katie Porter, who fought for and obtained $1.2 billion to develop a hydrogen hub in California. Nice start. All of this is a nice start. We have our foundation for our ultimate goal, massive replacement 
of fossil fuels by 2030. Katie Porter's new 1.2 billion California hydrogen hub could include solar-powered electrolyzers and huge storage units all along the California coastline. Green hydrogen is most efficiently manufactured from salt water, and the ocean can provide plenty of that. A California hydrogen hub could expand California's 65 hydrogen filling stations to hundreds more, and it could also expand California's 12,000 hydrogen cars to hundreds of thousands. A United States Green Hydrogen Agency could not only build solar-powered electrolyzers along the coastlines of the United States, but it could also install electrolyzers at the New Deal hydroelectric dam sites. Any of these venues could supply the water and electricity needed. A United States Green Hydrogen Agency is a virtual mandate because it alone can replace fossil fuels now. Private industry cannot manufacture green hydrogen profitably, but United States Green Hydrogen Agency could manufacture megatons of low-cost green hydrogen at federally owned electrolyzer units. United States Green Hydrogen Agency could service private industry with plenty of cheap green hydrogen for private sale at private hydrogen filling stations across America for privately owned hydrogen heating systems for buildings, for privately fueled municipal transportation systems, for privately fueled heavy transport, and for privately fueled commercial aviation. If the Grand Coulee Dam could furnish electricity for a region that extended from Canada to San Diego, United States Green Hydrogen Agency can service the same region with green hydrogen. If the Hoover Dam could furnish cheap electricity for Nevada, Arizona, and Southern California, U.S. Green Hydrogen Agency can furnish the same area with green hydrogen. If 29 dams of the Tennessee Valley Authority can furnish electricity for a seven-state region, a U.S. Green Hydrogen Agency could furnish green hydrogen there as well. On January 15, 1930, I will be 100 years old. I plan to have a birthday cake and say a few words. It will go something like this. The political and environmental leaders of the 2020s used the resources and methods of FDR's New Deal to replace filthy fossil fuels. We used our New Deal hydroelectric system to create a new hydrogen economy. And in the process, we inspired the world to use its 36,222 hydroelectric dams to do the same thing. With every good wish, sincerely, Dr. Joseph A. Bagnall.